On the 7th of June, 1968, 187 women at the Ford factory in Dagenham walked out on strike, followed by 200 more at the Halewood plant in Merseyside. The strike, which lasted three weeks and reportedly cost Ford eight million in orders, was in protest at the regrading of female sewing machinists as unskilled labour, when men doing similar work in the same factory were graded as skilled labour and paid higher wages. We had skills the same as the men, yet we were classed the same as the teenage boys who swept the floor. Barbara Castle, Secretary of State for Employment and Productivity in Harold Wilson's Labour government, was brought in to help negotiate a settlement. While the strikers' demands focused on the issue of grading, the broader debate quickly became about equal pay, a long-term goal for Castle. While she was unable to change the grading system at Dagenham, Castle was able to negotiate an increase in the women's pay, bringing this up from 80 to 92% of the men's wages. She also promised to introduce legislation on equal pay, which was delivered within two years. Equal pay was not just made in Dagenham though. This call has a much longer history, stretching back to the 19th century and accelerated by the mobilisation of women to undertake roles traditionally held by men during the two world wars. Between the wars, equal pay was an objective of the Six Point Group, founded in 1921 by Lady Rhonda. Meanwhile, the House of Commons voted several times in the 1920s in favour of equal pay in the civil service, but no action was taken. In 1944, Thelma Catholic Keir even tabled a successful equal pay amendment, only for the measure to be quashed by Churchill. The same year, the Equal Pay Campaign Committee was formed, chaired by Mavis Tate. In 1954, the committee organised a petition calling for equal pay in the public services that was signed by over 80,000 people. Presented to Parliament by a cross-party group of women MPs, including Irene Ward and Barbara Castle, the petition led to equal pay being phased into the civil service between 1955 and 1961. As a Conservative Chancellor, Rab Butler conceded, if we don't move, someone will. However, private employers were not affected. Castle announced talks on equal pay legislation to the House of Commons a year before the Dagenham dispute, a measure pledged in the 1964 Labour Manifesto. With pressure building within and outside Parliament, favourable polls and equal pay being a requirement for British entry to the European Economic Community, the prospect of legislation was finally within sight, with the Dagenham dispute proving the last push Castle needed. The Equal Pay Act banned discrimination between men and women in the terms and conditions of their employment, in both the public and private sector. It received royal assent on the 29th of May 1970, but, in a move designed to appease employers and give them time to make the necessary preparations, it did not come into force until the 29th of December 1975. While the principle of equal pay was now firmly established in law, the Act was more limited than Castle initially hoped and didn't stop employers using a variety of tactics to ensure women's pay did not reach parity with men. Some of the Dagenham machinists were also disappointed that neither the settlement nor the legislation resolved the issue of their work being downgraded. It would take another 16 years and a second strike in 1984 before they would be classed as skilled workers. The Equal Pay Act was later incorporated into the Equality Act 2010, but the struggle for equal pay in practice continues. According to the Office for National Statistics, on average, women continue to earn 13.1% less than men, while research conducted by the Fawcett Society highlights that 40% of people do not know that women have a right to equal pay for work of equal value. As Baroness Margaret Prosser said in the House of Lords, Having seen the working women's campaign for equal pay lead to victory with the Equal Pay Act 1970, I wouldn't have dreamt that, in 2020, women could still be facing pay discrimination. It's time to make the right to equal pay a reality for all women.